One moment, a storm-swept Pacific shoreline. Then, 16-foot waves roar over seawalls, flooding roads and swallowing beaches from California to Washington. This is not a tsunami, but something even more unpredictable. Scientists say the most dangerous surf in years is surging right now. Why do these monster waves strike without warning, and what happens if you ignore the alerts? On beaches from Sonoma County to Big Sur, and north through Oregon and Washington, the shoreline has become a danger zone. Powerful winter storms in the Pacific have sent long period swells crashing onto the coast, pushing waves up to 16 feet high across seawalls and into low-lying neighborhoods. National Weather Service alerts warn of life-threatening surf, with rip currents and sneaker waves running far beyond the normal tideline. Coastal roads and parking lots are underwater in places, and harbors are on alert for sudden surges that can break moorings or flood docks. In the San Francisco Bay Area, breaking waves have topped 14 feet. Monterey and Big Sur are seeing the highest impacts. Swells are cresting at 16 feet, driven by energy that has traveled thousands of miles. Residents in Oregon are watching as beaches disappear under whitewater, and emergency officials in Washington report flooding along river mouths and coastal highways. Advisory statements urge everyone to stay away from rocks, jetties, and the water's edge. Even experienced surfers and first responders are treating current conditions with caution. The risk is not just from the size of the waves, but from their unpredictable nature. One moment the beach appears calm, the next a surge sweeps inland with enough force to knock down anyone in its path. With king tides adding to the danger, the west coast is facing one of its most hazardous surf events in recent years. A monster wave does not need to be the tallest wave on the horizon to be the most dangerous. What sets these waves apart is their long period, the time it takes for one wave crest to pass and the next to arrive. While local wind waves might come every five to eight seconds, long period swells roll in at intervals of 15 seconds, even 20 seconds. Each wave in a long period swell carries more energy, built up over thousands of miles as the swell travels across the Pacific. That energy does not just move water up and down, it pushes forward letting the wave surge much farther inland than expected. When a long period wave hits shallow water near the shore, it slows down and grows taller, suddenly releasing its energy in a powerful burst. This is why a beach that looks safe one moment can be swallowed by a surge the next. These waves, sometimes called sneaker waves, can sweep over seawalls, flood parking lots, and pull unsuspecting people into the surf with little warning. The force is not just in the height, it is in the momentum and reach. Even experienced surfers and lifeguards treat long period swells with respect, knowing that their power is not always visible until it is too late. This is the mechanic behind the unpredictability and danger now facing the west coast. Far out in the Pacific, deep low pressure systems churn through the dark winter months, setting the stage for the waves now battering the west coast. These storms, sometimes stretching over 1,000 miles across, draw energy from the clash of cold polar air and warmer subtropical moisture. The result is a powerful atmospheric engine fueled by the jet stream that pushes bands of intense wind across the open ocean. This stretch of uninterrupted wind, known as the fetch, is the key to creating the long period swells that have reached California Oregon and Washington. The longer and stronger the fetch, the more energy is transferred into the water, allowing waves to grow in both size and force as they travel. In early December, a series of these deep lows remained anchored in the North Pacific, their winds blowing steadily from west to east, with a persistent high pressure ridge blocking the storms from moving inland, the energy had nowhere to go but into the sea. Over thousands of miles, the wind field shaped the surface of the ocean, building swells that gathered momentum with every hour. These were not local wind waves, which rise and fall quickly near the coast, but broad, organized swells born from days of sustained storm activity far offshore. 
Atmospheric rivers added another layer of fuel, streaming moisture and heat from the tropics into the heart of these storm systems. This combination of deep, low pressure, jet stream support, and atmospheric river moisture intensified the storms, stretching the fetch and extending the lifespan of the swell. By the time these waves reached the west coast, they carried the signature of their journey, long periods, high energy, and the capacity to reshape the shoreline in a matter of hours. The connection between distant Pacific storms and the monster waves now slamming the coast is not just a matter of distance, but of the relentless transfer of energy across the ocean. Real-time data from the Pacific forms the backbone of every warning issued along the coast. Dozens of moored buoys operated by the National Data Buoy Center float miles offshore, constantly measuring wave height, period, and direction. Each buoy is equipped with motion sensors that track the rise and fall of the ocean surface, recording the average height of the highest one-third of waves, a metric known as significant wave height. During this event, buoys off California and Oregon have reported readings well above normal, with dominant wave periods stretching to 18 or even 20 seconds. These numbers confirm what coastal communities are seeing, not just tall waves, but powerful, long period swells capable of reaching far inland. The data pipeline does not end at sea. Satellites pass overhead, mapping the surface of the ocean and tracking the movement of storm systems thousands of miles away. Coastal radar systems monitor wave approach and changes in real time. All of this information flows into the National Weather Service, where forecasters analyze the latest buoy reports, satellite imagery, and computer model outputs. When thresholds for danger are met, such as significant wave heights above 12 feet or dominant periods over 15 seconds, advisories and warnings are issued for affected regions. These alerts are not based on guesswork. They reflect a chain of measurements from the open ocean to the shoreline designed to give the public and emergency managers as much lead time as possible. The credibility of these warnings rests on decades of consistent, high-quality data, making them the first line of defense as monster waves threaten the coast. Harbors up and down the coast are facing unprecedented challenges. In Monterey, port authorities have suspended small craft operations, citing waves that break over jetties and sweep unsecured vessels from their slips. Dock workers scramble to reinforce moorings, while fishing crews remain on shore, watching as swells batter the breakwater. Along Highway 1, sections of road near the bluffs are closed, with maintenance crews racing against the tide to lay sandbags and clear debris. In Oregon, emergency managers report rapid beach erosion, with dunes collapsing and footpaths disappearing overnight. Lifeguards and first responders have carried out multiple rescues, pulling people from rip currents after sneaker waves surge far beyond the usual tideline. A harbor master in Santa Cruz describes the situation as hour by hour, with tides and wave sets combining in ways that make planning nearly impossible. Emergency officials warn that these conditions can create new hazards with little warning, urging everyone to stay back until the surf subsides. Confusion often spreads online when dramatic footage of violent surf appears. Clips of waves surging over seawalls or flooding parking lots quickly spark talk of tsunamis, even though these monster waves have a different cause entirely. Tsunamis are triggered by earthquakes or undersea landslides, sending a single, massive surge that can cross oceans in hours. In contrast, and contrast, the waves now battering the west coast are born from wind and weather, powerful low pressure systems deep in the Pacific that send long period swells rolling toward shore. National Weather Service statements stress the difference. These are not seismic events, and there are no tsunami warnings in effect. Winter brings a familiar pattern to the Pacific coastline. Each year, storms far offshore raise the risk of sneaker waves and hazardous surf. This is not a rare anomaly, but a recurring threat. With every advisory, officials urge the same actions. Stay off rocks, jetties, and the water's edge. Never turn your back to the ocean. Even calm stretches of beach can become dangerous in seconds. Ignoring these warnings puts lives at risk. 
The safest choice is to keep clear of the shoreline until conditions improve. Today, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration buoys still track each surge, an urgent reminder that the Pacific's power is never far from shore. As extreme weather intensifies, coastal risk grows in real time. The ocean does not wait for us to catch up, so neither can our awareness or preparation. Stay safe, stay informed.